Jay Billis, uh, when we last had him on, was just two weeks ago. And I, you know, I texted him. I said, thanks for coming on. He goes, call any time. <laughs> well, <laughs> Jay, I took you up on that. <laughs> I took you, are you back in the, are you back in the golf club? Jay, are you back? Are you back? No, there? I'm actually, I'm at Davidson College right now. My basketball camp starts this week. Oh, wow. Nice. But we've got uh, uh, 60 coaches and 150 players coming in in the next two days. So I'm, uh, I'm the administrative guy now. I'm, I'm giving people dorm rooms and, uh, giving them their, you know, rooming assignments. It's really fun. Well, I'm I'm truly appreciative of you taking time out of uh, in, in an important <laughs> venture for you to to chime in here, Jay. Um, you know, because as soon as I read this news from uh, from your colleague uh, Adrian Wojnarowski, I'm like, I, I got to get Jay on here to talk about. It. What's your thoughts on on Woj's report that Dan Hurley uh, and the Lakers are talking, and the Lakers have been relentless in their support uh, of trying to get him. Jay? I'm not surprised, Rich. I mean, Danny Hurley is the the preeminent coach in the game right now, and he's certainly the top college basketball coach. And I think for the Lakers, who have had, I think, seven different head coaches since Phil Jackson left, uh, establishing a coherent program that's going to last long term really makes perfect sense. And with the way Danny Hurley operates, especially the way he operates on the offensive end, I think you, you've seen a lot of us in college kind of documenting and diagramming the offense that he runs. It's really uh, kind of a European pro style that the NBA has has been moving toward. Uh, so I think, I think he'd be great if he wanted to do that. Uh, I'm not one, though, that thinks that the current landscape of college basketball is that big of a variable that it's something to get away from. Uh, but it's hard to turn down uh, not only the, the financial package that the Lakers are reportedly going to throw at, at Danny Hurley, but the idea of the challenge of coaching in the NBA and being able to uh, have the leeway to put together that type of program on the NBA level would be really attractive. Okay, so let me take a few of uh, piece by piece um, what what you just said. So you think uh, what he has put out there on the court to win back to back championships in UConn, X's and O's that that would fit the NBA? You think it would be a a, a good transition, a successful one? Not only good, I think it'd be great. Uh, I think that offense is next level good. And the type of conceptual uh, play that the NBA is looking to uh, to be able to use, and you know, there can't be a single NBA coach out there that wasn't watching UConn play that say we can we can use some of this. This would be good for us. Uh, but more than that, to me, it's not just an X and O thing. Uh, I think any time you get in a cycle of bringing in one person and thinking that, okay, we bring this person in, we'll see if it works, and then two years later we'll try somebody else, um, that's not sustainable in my view. And I think this sort of commitment to a coach, and specifically Danny Hurley, uh, I, I thought it was really interesting when Woj brought up the point about establishing a program that the Lakers want to establish a program. And I just can't think of a better program person uh, than Dan Hurley. Um, you know, look, there are going to be some idiosyncrasies that uh, that if he takes this, the Lakers are going to have to get used to. Like he's ridiculously, uh, uh, he's got all these uh, uh, things that, that uh, he likes. He wears the same socks and, uh, you know, when, when he wins, you know, the underwear doesn't change. I ho hopefully it's washed. Uh, but all these superstitions that he has, they'll have to get used to that kind of stuff. He, he, it's funny, Rich. He asked me uh, last year, UConn was playing in Seattle. They were playing Gonzaga. And I was at their practice, and, and he asked me, hey, would you speak to the team? Uh, so I did. And then later on in the season, uh, I was at UConn, and he, he said, would you speak to the team again? We won last time you, you spoke to the team. I said, you win every game, like whoever <laughs> speaks to the team. But he, it wasn't the message he cared about. It was just the superstitious thing of, of you spoke to the team and we won. And uh, they had just come off a loss to Creighton, and uh, and, and apparently they needed to win so much they they wanted to hear my BS again. You're a factor, Jay. There's no doubt about that. But uh, in, in all seriousness, um, the stuff that we see Dan Hurley um, do um, in a huddle, for instance, you know, bar admonishing his players for the, the, the huddle not being tight enough around him when he's calling a timeout. Does that stuff work in the NBA or you think he'd have to modify what he's doing with grown ass men for with long term contracts? 
What do you think? I mean, you might have to modify the volume of some things. I, I think Woj also pointed out uh, when I saw him earlier today, and I, it resonated that, that Dan Hurley told him, look, you know, I, I talked to my son a lot differently when he was a teenager than I, I do now that he's a grown man. Hmm. And it's the, the same sort of thing. The message can be the same. The delivery might have to change a little bit. I think college coaches have a little more leeway uh, uh, talking to uh, to teenagers and young adults than you might have talking to, as you put it, grown ass men. But that's a that's more of a volume thing, in my view. Uh, I don't think a lot of coaches talk about about their huddles and how they communicate and how they relate to one another on the NBA level. So that's not a big deal. I think the concepts wouldn't change all that much. I mean, even even going back to when Coach K was coaching the Olympic team, yeah, you know, I was lucky to be around a little bit with some of those teams um, when they were uh, working out in Vegas, and I didn't hear anything different than than he used with his Duke teams. It, it wasn't substantially different. Uh, the, 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 the length of practices was a little bit different, but other than that, it was a lot of the same stuff conceptually. And, uh, and I think you see the same thing with, with Dan Hurley basketball is basketball and he's a great basketball coach. And I think greatness doesn't really know a level. And then also in your first blush answer, Jay Billis here on the rich Eisen show in your first blush answer and reacting to the news that the Lakers are relentlessly pursuing Dan Hurley. He is listening. There is traction. Those are all words that Woj used on, on ESPN. You, you, you mentioned the current state of college sports and how the world of basketball um, isn't similar, I guess, if I'm putting words in your mouth, to the college football conversation where, you know, Jim Harbaugh left Michigan after winning a national championship there. And part of the conversation, obviously, is whatever was going on between him and the NCAA was something he probably wanted to get away from. Also, that's the general sense that college football has changed so much that there is less uh, coaching involved and more administrative and all sorts of portal and NIL sort of business. And I'm already hearing that subscribe to this conversation involving Dan Hurley, that maybe this is a perfect time to get out of college athletics and go to the pros. You don't subscribe to that for college basketball, Jay? Not as the lead, not as the leading factor, Rich. I think it can be one factor, but it's not the leading factor. Uh, I, I don't think that Dan Hurley has in any way been unhappy in college basketball. There, there are always things that, that are minor annoyances, but look how quickly he was able to take last year's roster and turn it into an equally talented roster that he has for next year. I mean, UConn's going to be, from a talent standpoint, top three or four in the country going into next year. And, uh, and given their track record, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if they were not only a contender, but if they, they were a, a three-peat. That's possible. Now, does that mean you walk away from that or, or it makes it harder to walk away from that? Uh, but I tend to think it's more going forward. If he decides to do this, he's going towards something, not away from something, if that makes sense. Jay Bill is here on the Rich Eisen Show. A few minutes left with him here. So uh, the last college coach that uh, almost left because he thought he had a chance to coach LeBron James, if I'm not mistaken, was Tom Izzo in Michigan State when the Cavs were reaching out and then the Comic Sans stuff happened and LeBron wound up taking his talents to South Beach and Tom Izzo stayed. Um, now LeBron is in a potential transition. Uh, I think everybody believes he's going to stay with the Lakers. Uh, we saw uh, a tweet of his based on a, uh, a conversation about uh, Hurley's innovative offense on, of all places, a podcast hosted by J.J. Redick of all people, uh, back in April. So obviously we could see by LeBron's reaction to Hurley's conversation with Redick that he likes Hurley. Um, another thing that we're hearing right now is who better to place your son uh, into into whose hands to place your son for his development professionally than, than Dan Hurley. Do you think all this is a, another good piece of connective tissue for this to happen, Jay? Certainly, certainly could be. Um, I think it's more forward looking than just LeBron, or at least it seems that way. Right. That when you're talking about putting a program in, it's not just a one or two year program. I don't know how much longer LeBron has, but the end is certainly closer than the beginning. But if you're looking at a 10 year window, that's going to be post LeBron. So putting in this this program for the Lakers and and your point about development is really important. I think that's where the NBA has become more like college over the years is there are so many younger players coming into the league. The development of those assets is really important. 
And Danny Hurley, in all his years in basketball, and he's been a basketball lifer with the, you know his father, Bob Hurley Sr. at St. Anthony's and the Basketball Hall of Fame and with his brother, uh, Bobby Hurley at Arizona State, you know, he's a he's a basketball lifer. And the development of, of players in the NBA is really important. And it's not just the development of stars. It's the development of, of quote unquote, role players, uh, because so many of these guys, there, there are very few superstars in the league that are going to are going to change the fortunes of a franchise by themselves. You're going to have to you're going to have to have players around them. So when you bring in a young player, you're not just bringing them in for right now. You're bringing them in for the future. And uh, and Danny is very good at, at developing talent and uh, and taking the longer view. So I think this is this is about, you know, who Dan Hurley is, what he's capable of. But it's also about a long term vision. And, and it sounds like the Lakers have a vision for a program rather than just a vision for a coach to come in and take a seat and uh, and see if he can fly the plane. If not, they'll put somebody else in there. It doesn't sound like it's the latter. No, I, I hear you. But, I mean, in order for this rocket ship to launch, um, you know, LeBron's got to be in the mission control right now, uh, okaying the countdown, you know, like green lighting the countdown, right? And so I guess that's the, the reason why I'm bringing all this up. Plus your next, uh, your next assignment, I imagine, is the NBA draft for ESPN. What is your assessment of Bronny James? as a professional prospect, Jay? I think he's a good talent. I saw him play in high school at Sierra Canyon. And uh, did I think that if his name was Bronny Smith, we would be covering him the same way? No. Um, I I think he's a very good player that has a a very good future. But the comparisons to his dad in high school, I thought were horribly unfair to him. Uh, I saw his dad play in high school from the time he was a sophomore on. I was on the crew that did his first, you know, mm. first game on ESPN uh, at the University of Akron back in the day in 2002, and I was the only guy on the crew that had seen him. And at the time, I said that LeBron James was the best high school player I'd ever seen. Mm. And then people were saying, "What about Oscar Robertson and Lou Alcindor?" I goes, "How old do you think I am? I didn't see those guys. I said <laughs> best I've ever seen." Uh, but but Bronny's different, and he's going to need some more time. And I think he can he can be an NBA player and a solid one. Uh, but but he he's going to require some some time to develop. Well, and obviously Dan Hurley would be the guy to do that again. So I, no, you know, I'll put you in this position. You can take it if you'd like. Um, what do you think? Do you think this happens? Do you think Dan Hurley takes this gig, Jay? If uh, everything, all things being equal, his family wa- is okay moving west, the money's right. What do you think? I don't know, Rich, honestly. Um, you know, I know some car- comparisons have been made to when Coach K uh, had a dalliance with the Lakers uh, years ago. I do think this is this is different. Um, I could see him doing it, but at the same time, like yesterday, everybody thought J.J. Redick was getting the job. So I have no idea how long this has been going on and how far the discussions uh, ha- have reached. But if you're going to do it, uh, if you're going to make that jump, uh, it seems like there's no better opportunity for Dan Hurley than to do it here. It's an iconic brand. Uh, it sounds like the Lakers are all in for the long haul. And uh, and it certainly sounds like financially uh, it's going to be hard to turn down. But but he's leaving uh, kind of a, a big – he's leaving a big job where they're on top of the heap. But, but I, I do think it's a fair variable to consider – that that will the Big East and will UConn ha- have the resources to be as competitive as Dan Hurley would like, and I think they will. I think they do now, and I think they will long term. Uh, but but look, it's going to be easier uh, financially in a lot of different ways in the NBA than it is in college. It's going to be all basketball. He's not going to have to worry about some of these things. Uh, and I can I can tell you, you know this uh, being out there. I grew up in Southern California. I like it better than Connecticut, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah, that's what I started the show <laughs> saying. It's somebody who moved from Connecticut to Southern California. By the way, he's from Jersey. I'm from Staten Island, which is practically Jersey. I'm like, he's gone. <laughs> that's that's what I said, you know. But you know, no, uh, no dis no disrespect, no disrespect to any no no disrespect to anybody, but Mystic and Manhattan Beach are not comparable. <laughs> That pretty much does uh, finish up. up. And, and with uh, with the risk of that not being a mic drop moment, do you want to take a crack at the finals before I let you go? Your two cents on what you think is going to happen? Tipping off tonight in the NBA finals, Jay? 
I like Dallas, uh, even though Boston is probably more talented top to bottom with Porzingis back. I like Dallas because I think Doncic is the the one he's the one problem that you just cannot solve. Uh, you're going to have to double him to get the ball out of his hands because everything else does not work. And once you get it out of his hands, they're capable at other positions. I, I, I think he's that good. When he's done, we're going to be talking about him, not just top 10. He could be a top five player. Uh, before he's done he's that talented wow and of course i'm a sports talk radio host i'm mandated to ask for a number in how many games what do you think jay what do you got i would say dallas and but i think it'll go seven okay wow a game seven dallas victory in boston would be something uh i I, i'd be uh i definitely would pay to see a game seven uh we'll see what happens with the result jay thanks again uh best of luck in your in your venture there at uh it's what are you go you're are you moving into Steph Curry's old dorm room? Is that what you're doing, Jay? Is that what's happening there at Davidson? No? There is no way. My name's on the camp. It's the Jay Billis Skills Camp. I do not stay in the dorm. <laughs> uh, I am I am sleeping in my own bed. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. You're the best. Really appreciate you taking the time and uh and being a man of your word saying anytime. Appreciate it. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Rich. Right back at you. Jay Billis Skills Camp, jbillescamp.com to be part of that. Right here on the Rich Eisen Show, that's Jay Billis. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.